Hello folks, welcome back. For I am the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom and I am here kind of happy I have my adult beverage in hand. Yes it is, yes, it is green. And I'm celebrating a little bit because I finally got all my unemployment work for like three weeks ago, finally completed. Hooray, state of Florida! Yep, finally figured out how to do something, I think. But I'm just happy I don't have to do... I don't have to fiddle with that until the 30th. Because I have everything, and I do have to apply to... Oh, wow. 18? Why do I think I have more than that? 16, 17, 18? Oh, wow. I do have two more jobs to apply to. So, we'll see how that goes. I have no idea what's going to happen. I'd rather be working than on, on, on unemployment. But I'll take free government money if I have to. So, I can't complain. Another person. Dave Sanders. Thank you so much, sir. Um, he had in a comment on my Thursday video. There's no Thursday video this week. I'm all spent out of ideas for the most part. Um, but he said that my video about the 10 things to do during the stay at home order was inspirational. Wow. Dave Sanders, th thank you so much. Not only do you get your video shortly, but Dave Sanders, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Um, rarely would anyone call anything this guy does inspirational, but you did, and I highly appreciate that. So you, sir, are going to get one of my prized thank yous, even though it's kind of out of order. You, sir, are a prince among men, and definitely that luchador on a forklift. So I'll see how this video goes. Um, it's a pretty typical week for me. Um, this video is going to get up sometime Tuesday probably. And then Tuesday is going to be another live review. It's another live stream of Impact. It's going to be the Rebellion Part 1. Oh, wow. I have that to do too tomorrow. Wow. I didn't realize I had stuff to do tomorrow. So I'll see what happens. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see when I, whenever I wake up. I think that the terrible thing about the stay-at-home order is that I've literally been going to bed at like 3 or 4. And I think once I went to bed like 6 in the morning. I think between making videos and playing video games and just not having a clue. Yeah, it's been kind of weird like that. And you know, like the one day I was like literally, I think I woke up at 6 a.m. just to see if I could get on to that uh, stupid unemployment thing, which I got done today. 
Yes, 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 yes. Enough about that, though. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. Interesting show. Um, I know everyone's heard the rumors about that they let people go. They let go of a whole bunch of new NXT people. I think only the one I've seen wrestle, um, the one Chinese guy, Rocky. I saw him wrestle once. You can go back to my archive and see him wrestle. That was a long, That was a while ago. And that was, I think, real on that real C show. So they've let go of kind of the main talent already. There's no more main talent people being let go of. Now they're saying like developmental people. And honestly, if I didn't remember that, if they didn't say Chinese and show a picture of him, I'm like, hey, I saw him wrestle. Um, I don't know. I think another Chilean guy, two guys from Saudi Arabia. And a Chilean person was also released. I don't know who they are. Don't ask me because I couldn't tell you. They walked through that door with their NXT or their um, oh, Performance Center t-shirt on with their name on the back. I'd be like, sir, how the hell did you get in this house? Let me grab this knife very quickly and start yelling and screaming. And And, of course... Call police. Calling police is probably most important. Wow, you're so smart. I wish. I wish. Just good. And just lucky. And hard worker. Because that is true. Any potential employers looking. Um, no matter what my faults are, and I have many faults, but being a hard worker is not one of them. Evil is one. Um, when I get home, I do like to relax and imbibe. I know in New Jersey, living next to the casinos, so I have plenty of vices. So, but we don't need to go there. Let's talk. Let's, uh, uh, uh. let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. So it starts off Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre, he gets. He said, "You know what, Seth? You beat me, so I challenge you to a fight for my title, the WWE Corporate Center, on a rooftop. I don't know if it's on a rooftop. That's gonna be a fun match. I'm actually looking forward to that." Because the way they're structuring money in the bank where they actually come in the ground floor. I think they're only going to have like title matches. The men's money in the bank. And the women's money in the bank. So it's not. It's going to be probably a good three hours. I can see it going a little bit longer. Only because if they have to fight through all the levels. I've driven by... The WWE um, Titan Towers once. Don't quote me on this. I want to say it's a good... I mean, office building size. I want to say it's about... 15 to 20 floors. I might be off. So, so don't yell at me if I am. But that could take a while. Um, the, uh, other title matches are kind of straightforward. So, but then, uh, Zelina Vega shows up with flanked by Austin Theory on one side, Angel Guards on the other side, and Drew McIntyre said, well, where is Andrade at? And Andrade jumped him from behind, but Drew was expecting that. So he gets jumped by Andrade, and he gets claimed for his efforts. Zelina Vega, who looks incredibly hot. Wow. So round, so firm, so shiny. But she told the other two, go, go in there. And they're like, what? No. Um, so the first match was Austin Theory versus Zelina Vega's real-life husband, Aleister Black. Zelina Vega, you better start saying good things about your husband. Or there's going to be no nookie for you tonight. 
so Austin Theory against Alistair Black. It was a pretty fun. Starts off pretty classic standing wrestling match. Alistair Black's been doing this a lot more. He's been trying to wrestle more instead of being a very strike heavy person. Let me change that mic a little bit. There we go. That's a little bit better. Um, I'm still working out kinks and stuff. Again, I'm not full use of this microphone because I have this thing in my ear. So I'm just used to hearing my voice. And so that's a little bit different. And I think that's where I get a little bit of the, the delay from, too. Those people that said, oh, you have a delay. It's like, well, look at where I'm doing this from, folks. Does this look like a professional studio to you? No, this is a hobo office. Um, so, so Alistair Black's been starting off more as a wrestler, which doesn't bode to him well, because, because he's, he's that striker. Uh, then Theory again, he starts striking, which again, it's a no-no with Alistair Black. And then Alistair Black came by, uh, drop kicked him through the, through the ropes. That was really good. Then Zelina gets involved, distracts Alistair Black. He said, honey, I'll have dinner ready if you're good. I don't know what she, yeah, she just like came out. So terrible at my, uh, but then Zelina Vega gets involved. She distracts her husband, Alistair Black. Theory then, they use a lot of that. They mentioned it's like, oh, the diamond plate. I think the diamond plate's a little bit better because it does give a little bit better traction. The great probably gives the best, but if Zelina Vega is going to be wearing heels, I know from firsthand experience, you do not wear heels on greats. When I was in New York, I got off the, the uh, ferry. And it's a great. So I had on, I th think, my motorcycle boots, which are just kind of a flat, really grippy sole. But it has a great feeling. The woman next to me had, like, no clue about the ferry. And she, like, wore, like, those, st those stiletto heels. And she, like, braced herself on me. I'm like, cool. I don't mind. So I, then I kind of grabbed her elbow. Because I felt the shoulder and weight. I'm like, oh, you okay? She's like, oh, my gosh, I'm not used to this. Can you support me? I'm like, yes, I can, miss. I was a very good gentleman that day. Should have gotten laid, but oh, that's beyond the point. So Theory is back in control for the most part. Um, he tosses Alistair Black into that top turnbuckle, like that thing he does. Black goes for the triangle choke. Again, if you're going to be a martial artist, you should be able to do martial art moves like the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu triangle choke. Uh, then he goes back to striking, hits the acai moonsault. Again, Alistair Black is being presented as a wrestler, but his strengths are really striking because whenever he gets into a wrestling match, he always falters a little bit. Uh, he does have that great bridging suplex. You try it on and off a little bit. Um, this is a black mass, but because Austin Theory had that scouted, but Austin Theory did not see that second black mass co coming. And what well, that was the end of poor Austin Theory. It was a good match. It was a cheeseburger match. I always wonder what the at-home situation is like, sweetie. You know, you really should be cheering me. Oh, honey. Yeah, bat the eyes at that. Um, so, again, that was a pretty good match. Then Shannon Bezier came out. Taking on... Let's see if I get her name right. Angie Harville. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a fake Billy Kay. I think her name's there somewhere, too. Yeah, it's... Impressive. Oh, wait a second. I do have her name. Yes, 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 yes. Someone famous. I have her I have her autograph. I forget how she said I don't know. She just put a heart. She just said impressive. And put like a heart P, a heart P. I don't know. Who knows? Whatever. You can never tell wrestlers' signatures anyway. Um... So, yeah, so Shannon Baszler took on said jobber from NXT. A known jobber from NXT, by the way. Uh, she just seemed to, uh, Shannon just, like, pissed off. 
did a nasty double leg takedown. Yeah, again, she tried. She like tried to run the poor little Angie tried to just run away. Did the arm stomp? Yep, that was it. Shannon Baser wins, kind of the same way she did last time. She stormed off, but then she grabbed the ladder, so she made it a little bit interesting because she's again qualified into the women's Money in the Bank match. I'll have my prediction on that. I think in like two more weeks. So we'll see what happens. She stuck her arm in the ladder, kicked the ladder. Yeah, br broken arm in the ladder. Uh, it didn't do much for me. It just makes Shane or Baser look like a like a freaking rotten loser. And a bitch. Um, so this was a can of soup. Then we had Ricochet and Cedric Alexander taking on Brandon Vink and Shane Thorne. A revision of TM61 for those of you that are old like me. I'll tell you what. I don't know what speed they use. Ricochet and Cedric Alexander, they are quick. Uh, Ricochet did, did a roll up, a, a rolling drop kick to Vink. Vink got beat up a lot. I mean... The pace was, you're like, oh, I, whoa, what's up? I, oh, I can't. Back and forth, it was so frenetic. It was almost too fast, where it's kind of hard to follow. If you're like, well, let me write this. Oh, they did something else. Um, no, let me write. Oh, whoa, check out all this stuff. Very fast-paced match. I was, I was amazed by it. Then the suplex. And Senton and all the double teams, Ricochet and Cedric Alexander, pulled off so fast. Brendan Vink and Shane Thorne, they're not slow, but they just, they were like struggling to keep up. I want to say if it would be any other tag team, they'd almost look like they would be a step behind, which is weird to say, but that the pace was so fast, so frenetic. Like Tornado DDTs left and right, the counter into a top, uh, to a top turnbuckle bomb. Uh, tornado DDT led to a standing shooting star press. He kicked out of that. There was a recoil into the lumbar check. Uh, he sold it great. I'll tell you what, just it was short, but it was fast. They got a lot of stuff. They like it's like finisher, finisher, signature, finisher, finisher, signature, signature. It was I enjoyed it. Not much of a build. I'm sure Jim Cornell will complain about this match, but I'll tell you what, I enjoyed it. It was fast paced. I'm like Whoa, they can actually go that fast? And I looked at the clock, I'm like, wow, it's been an hour. You made it that much in an hour? Again, very impressive. Again, this was a good surf and turf match. Then Charlie uh, interviewed the Kabuki Warriors. I don't care. I don't want to understand what Asuka says. It makes no difference. Asuka's great. Kyrie Sane is going to be leaving soon. I feel bad. Um, the only reason I say that is Kyrie Sane has been jobbing out left and right. I th think she recently got married, so she might during this whole coronavirus want to take some time off. So we'll see what happens there. And then it was Kyrie Sane versus Nia Jax too. You know I'm not a fan of rematches back to back. Um, Kyrie Sane. Honestly, just gets hair tossed a lot by, by Nia Jax. Nia, Nia Jax is a beast. So it's a short arm clothesline, look like it hurt. Uh, and then I don't know what she did, but she like slammed poor Kyrie Saint into that bottom turnbuckle. It's like a buckle bomb, but instead of hitting the top, she hit the bottom. That looked vicious. Now, Kyrie Saint does try to make a comeback with some leg kicks, a drop kick to the knee. Uh, once Nia Jax gets on the ground, she does. Yeah, the spinning back fist to Nia Jax, who's kneeling. But then, again, this is Nia Jax. This is the monster woman in WWE. She's not going to go down that easily. Uh, I love the fact that she says, bye-bye. Hits a small and drop on poor little Kyrie Sane. Sane gets dropped. It was okay. It was a ham sandwich match. Then we had MVP 
taking on old Paul Cruz, and I don't know the MVP was wrestling anymore. I thought I figured he's just gonna sit back, relax, or be put on the furlough list because again, he's kind of old. He's up there, but I guess he wanted a match. He just wanted to put Apollo Cruz over. Fine by WWE if they make a second round of furloughs and if he's on it, I can understand. And then it's just tough times. And listen, I've been furloughed. It's time they have to learn to live on nine bucks an hour too. Because I'll tell you what, I wish I was earning a hundred thousand dollars. And I know there are certain costs and things you have to take care of, but I can still figure out how to save a pile of cash. I'd be happy if I earned ten thousand dollars. But so with this match, um, MVP, he he looked gas right after he came down to the ring, running around, just cutting a promo. He just seemed gassed already. Paul Cruz came out much better cardiovascular conditioning. Uh, Cruz just his punches, drop kick and elbow, then kind of comboing himself up. Uh, you know, he because then MVP went to the outside. Cruz jumped onto the ring, got foot swept onto the floor. On to that hard diamond plate. Diamond plate's not necessarily soft either. Ooh, sorry about that. Um, MVP. Next thing we saw goes to commercial break. MVP has Paul Cruz in the camel clutch in the ring. And just trash talking. This is the one thing that WWE has to do more if they're going to have more of these empty ring or empty arena matches in the performance center. They have to have some level of trash talk. Or something with volume, like we'll see later later in the show. Because if not, it just literally feels empty. Um, the good thing is, is that you can't hear the spots. That was my fear. Oh, I hate that little flush thing that's there. That stupid nail part. Um, so the good thing is, they're not telling their spots. You can't hear every so often. But it, that's the exception versus the norm. So they're getting things together. They seem to be working well well during this time. And MVP just trash talking. He starts name dropping. Oh, I've beaten the likes of Rey Mysterio, Batista, Kane. Who are you? You know, you're 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 good at NXT, but you're not main event level. Oh, that's good stuff. That's good shit. Uh, then. Cruz again. When he got his comeback in, he slammed him. He picked him up from the camel clutch, slammed him back. Uh, spine buster. Something. A power slam, then a frog splash. And then he tried for his frog splash, but he ate the knees. MVP uh, brought his knees up to his chest, which is good. The MVP actually had to bring his knees all the way up to his chest. It's not just not to like to like raise his feet off the ground. That's good to see someone who's actually trying. So I give credit where credit's due, especially to Apollo Cruz. Trying to sell everything he can. Uh, MVP hits the playmaker, but yeah, that wasn't enough. He was absolutely shocked. Apollo Cruz hits the gorilla slam into the standing moonsault into a standing shooting star press, and the one with a blue thunder bomb. Wow, I don't even know if people use a blue thunder bomb anymore. I like this match. This was a good match. It's a cheeseburger match. Then Ruby Wright came out with an interview. And oh my. And if you if you saw the title, there's a reason why. Sarah Logan got mentioned a lot by Ruby Wright. And you know who we've heard nothing of? Absolutely zero of Roman Reigns. Uh-oh. That's never a good sign. Again, it's that whole thing out of sight, out of mind. So she was saying, yeah, you know what? Liv's still a pet dog. I have to, I have to teach her her place every so often. So, yes, a standard heel promo. Then, then again, we had Liv Morgan taking on Ruby Riot. For a spot in the women's in the bank ladder match. And I'm like, oh no. Is is Liv Morgan going to lose and, and get furloughed too? And then we see the ending. I'm like, oh no, they can't do that to her. 
So let's get into this match. It was actually pretty quick. A Ruby Riot was so aggressive. She had the nasty looking neck, neck crank almost into like kind of like weird blood choke thing. I'm pretty sure you, you if, if you were in a north south position on the mat, if you did that, I'm pretty sure that would choke out your, your opponent. Uh, I think for some reason, every time I'm watching uh, YouTube clips, they've been showing a lot of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu stuff. Never hurts to watch the odds for those. Learn something, who knows. But um, and then let's see. So Liv, Liv came back for a little bit. Uh, Ruby Riot began to just, just heavy with the strikes. And then Liv hit that like bouncing flatliner off the second rope. I'm like, wait, that's her f finisher. And, and she, Liv Morgan pinned Ruby Riot clean. Liv Morgan goes on to the Money in the Bank. I was shocked. This was a ham sandwich of a match. My only fear is that Ruby Riot gets furloughed. Because remember, she was on the shelf for a while with a shoulder with a shoulder injury. So ugh. we had Bobby Lashley, the mighty Bobby Lashley in the gym flipping tires. So that's a pretty common workout thing to do. So, so that was okay. And then Lana wanted it. What the heck was that? And then Lana wanted to get involved a little bit. It sounded like someone stepped on a raccoon or something out there. That's weird. I'll have to find my cat. So, so yeah, Lana just wants to be, be on the camera in that amazing dress. Showing off again her very round bust, very shiny looking bust too. Not the most complimentary thing, but hey, it's pretty cool. Oh, well that was weird. So let's see here. So next match we had Rey Mysterio taking on Murphy. Because Murphy lost his first name and I don't know, who knows what's going to happen to Murphy later. Uh, this was a pretty fun match. Um... Tell you what, again, the trash talking was great. It's like, oh, you're not, you're not bad for an old man. It's here, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. You're not bad for an old bloke. Um, Starts off again, Rey Mysterio, the the head the headlock, into the leg scissors, the trade of pins, very fast, very fanatic. Goes for a six one nine early, tries to end it pretty quickly. However, outside Murphy just begins to toss right into the barricade, and you know what that means, folks. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Again, that diamond plate. I have to make a song. Oh, this is now the diamond plate. Because now it is my turn to finally get mentioned by these announcers. Because everyone just normally steps on me. They don't really care. They just toss their bodies onto me and their dirty souls. Oh, yeah. That's a terrible song. I'll probably get demonetized. Well, I, if I was monetized, I'd get demonetized for that. Then, let's see here. Again, the, the stomp. Yeah. Uh, Ray, he does a see his senton. He comes back. 619 and a tornado DDT. It's great. They both kind of worked their spots. Murphy, he had that like flippy neck, neck breaker thing, and then then Murphy got dropped and he did that. But yeah, well, actually before that, Murphy on the outside got sent to the Huracana into the barricade again, and for some reason, why do they have barricades anyway? I mean, this is just like the performance center. I guess if they want to set up, say, this is what it's going to look like. I guess this is their stage, but even Jim Ross said, why do we need barricades? No one's here. <laughs> to keep out Bray Wyatt, I guess. Who knows? Uh, and his puppets. Sister Abigail and Mercy the Buzzard will show up in, in the ring and interfere in a match. Who knows? This is the whole concept of the absurdity. The theater of the absurd, which is pro wrestling. Uh, then finally, 
Rey Mysterio hits a crossbody onto Murphy, but Murphy is strong enough to roll over on and hits the hits that like GTS neck breaker. I think it used to be called like the tie breaker. Uh, the knee, and then a brain buster. Brain buster and the pile driver should be the two most protective moves ever. Not everyone's just doing them willy nilly. Terrible. A uh, two count from that. Uh, Ray, uh, they jockey the, up on the top rope. Ray hits a Canadian destroyer, then a six one nine, then frog splash. Ray Mysterio goes on, and I'm almost glad that Jeff Hardy's not there. Because you know, if they have a big enough building, he's gonna jump from some window to a swanton from like the second floor, and it would just be a, me- a lot a legal mess. But this was a good match, though. Again. It's well paced. These two know what they're doing. This is a surf and turf match. And have you noticed something? WWE has been doing more matches and less promotions. Yes, every so often they will have the in the in ring interview. But then they have like the short promo, but that's that's not the focus of the show. The focus is now switched to wrestling. I like that. Uh, Then we had Charlie, Charlie, uh, interviewing Selena Vega (laughs) and Angel Garza. Oh, Angel Garza. I don't know what he said because I don't speak Spanish, but but Charlie got a little, little flush there. Oh, that was awesome. Hey, Charlie, if it doesn't work out with you and Angel Garza because he's too much of a playboy, I'm a much more stable person most of the time. Then we had poor Caden Carter. I think she used to go by... uh, 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 I know I have her signature, MJF. Why do I want to say it was like Lana Lane? What's her name? I know she's up there somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Lacey Lane. I knew it was there somewhere. They changed her name, I guess, probably because of Lacey Evans. She used to be Lacey Lane. Now she's she, she Caden Carter. She she had a tear in her stockings, too. And I think she has a whole bunch of, like, leg tattoos. Because you can see, like, this weird pattern. I'm like, that's weird. Like, oh, that's a... Huge leg tattoo. I want to say she's Filipino. So I don't know how that goes in their culture. I don't think it's necessarily something like the Maori style tattoo or tribal tattoos. Hey, for the most part, listen, when I answered my census, instead of putting down what, like, like my lineage, I, I said, I said American. So I have no idea. I know she's Filipino, though, because I think her... TJP and Austin Theory did a YouTube show together. Yeah, I think it was... No, 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 no. I correct myself. It was Caden Carter, Shotzi Blackheart, because he's also Filipino, and Austin Theory. They were like cooking Filipino food. Looks good to me. You wrap anything in like you you wrap meat in most things. If as long as it's a good part of meat, I'll probably eat it. So she was saying on um, Charlotte Flair. Um, Charlotte Flair starts off a big kick. Poor Caden Carter was not expecting that. Um, Charlotte Flair was strutting. Caden Carter then hit a crucifix bomb. Tried to go for the Royal Octopus, but no Flair's too strong. Uh, sticks her head between the ropes. Whoop! Slingshots Caden Carter's head into the top rope. And then it was a spear. Charlotte put on the figure for her. She said, oh, you want me to finish this now? And then she finally got into the figure eight. Caden Carter taps out. Oh, ref, it hurts so much. Um, again, now they're doing the female version of the NXT jobbers. Which Caden did put it. You know what? Caden Carter, I'm so sorry. You're such a lovely, wonderful person, but this match was a can of soup.
mainly because it was predictable. And I'm getting a little tired of them treating all the NXT members like jobbers. So, unfortunately, Caden Carter, I'm sorry. But you have to feel the wrath of Hobo Tom. Then we had Andrade taking on Akira Tozawa. Oh, but Akira Tozawa just won a spot in the Cruiserweight match. Why, NXT? Why, WWE? Why? Uh, so once this came up, I'm like, Akira Tozawa is losing. Although it was a good match, but I'm downgrading this match. Mainly because it was predictable. It was like New Japan. I, at first, I thought it was New Japan and Pro Wrestling Milk. I know Andrade did start Los Ingo Manoles de Japan. So that's his New Japan background. I know Akira Tozawa, Pro Wrestling Noah is over there. But I think more precisely, it would be CMLL taking a, uh, versus Dragon Gate. So I want to say it's, it's some combination of those two things going on. And I wonder if... I know New Japan has worked... In the, I, I think New Japan's worked with CMLL or AAA in the past. So I want to say they got... Um, El Ijo del Fi Fantasmo. Uh, what was the other guy? Uh, no... Oh, now I forget his name. It's not Fantasmo. Bandito? Oh, Bandito. I think it was something like that, but I want to say he was on the show once. Uh, I think once I want to say Pentagon Jr. and Ray Phoenix were on New Japan like once. So... It wasn't like a main event thing. It was like. I want to. I almost want to say it was a Pongi 2K. I want to say it was like some like outrageous like. Triple. Triple. Juniors match. Triple junior tag team match. Where it was like a Pongi 3K. The Young Bucks. And Pentagon Jr. And. Ray Phoenix. Maybe it was an El Bandito. I think so. I'll have to, I'll have to look into that. But I think El, Fant um, Ijo, El Ijo del Fantasma, I think, actually just signed with NXT. I think. He has to get his mask back. Because he looks better. Because, again, if you're going to have a name like Fantasma, you just need to wear a mask. And actually, I think I'm going to be. I think I think one of the I think Hobo I think El Vagabundo Del Ijo Senko Trace I, th I think he managed to like find a way to buy a mask. So when we'll see him in a in, oh wow in a few wow in a few more weeks. I didn't realize he'd be coming up that soon for Senko Senko Mania. So we'll see what happens then. Uh, but so with this match, let me get back on point. Uh, Akira starts off just knee strikes, again very heavy striking, something you would see from like Dragon Gate, CML, and New Japan Pro Wrestling, and Pro Wrestling Noah. Uh, the big boot, uh, did the senton, the running senton, like he ran up and down the apron. Oh, and that was so. Vicious landed in to Andrade, who was slouched on the barricade. Because I am the barricade, I am the barricade, I am the barricade. Cuckoo, choo. Uh, did the missile drop in the ring? Yeah, and Selena Vega acts as a distraction. And oh, the sound of Andrade's chops makes even my chest hurt. Then Akira went to the Iron Octopus hold. Yeah, it's probably done a little bit differently. That's okay. Then eventually got powered on by Andrade. It was a good hard-hitting match. Andrade eventually did hit the draping. 
No, he went for the. Um... Entirely got. Akira went for three pinfalls, followed up by a super kick. However, Andrade prevails with a draping hammerlock DDT. I hate to say this, guys, but I knew what was going to happen. It's a cheeseburger match. And we have the Street Pop Profits. They introduced <laughs> Bianca Belair. So I guess Bianca Belair is going to be on the main roster now. That'll be interesting because I want to say Charlotte's going to take on Io Shirai for the women's NXT belt. So it was Bianca Belair taking on Santana Garrett. And I know Santana Garrett's signature. It's here. So there it is. Santana Garrett because she put a little heart above it. I like it when the girls put a heart above it. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Except for Ruby Riot, because she refuses to admit her familial relationship with Heidi Lovelace. So with this, uh, you, again, you kind of knew what was going to happen. Really basic match. Uh, and then, whoa, Santana Garrett, she was so shiny and so purpley. She's wearing happy colors. I like I like those bright colors. Those are pretty cool. Uh, again, Santana, she tries to start off pretty quick. Goes right after Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair said, eh, eh, you're going to wrestle my way. And again, this is where the Street Profits were out. This is where the Street Profits, even though they were on the announce team, they actually made it sound like there was an audience there. They were cheering Bianca Belair. They were rooting for her. Uh, the King, Jerry the King Law was like, whoa, whoa. No, uh, the Street Profits needed that. At this point, this show needed that little oomph. Because if not, it was going to fall flat. Uh, then Bianca Belair, she's actually in really good shape. She bounces around like a boxer. I've tried that. I'm not good at that. Uh, I just saw Rocky 3, I th yeah, on Sunday. And I'll tell you what. I, I was watching the footwork. I'm like, man, that's impressive. <laughs> I can't do that because I think my catch just stares at me. First of all, I think I'd trip over my own feet if I tried it. I don't know why they do it, but like they do the back and forth action. I'm like, whoa. Uh, Santana again. She does a cross neck chop. I like that. However, she like does the dusty roads. I'm going to telegraph. Oh. This arm drags and just counter me whenever you feel like it. And then Bianca did the squat suplex into a split legged splash. Santana did try the cross body. I like the fact that they at least gave Santana Garrett some moves. So it wasn't a total squash, but again, you know who was losing. Uh, Bianca then did a whole series of things. Again, like did like some face first thing with the top turnbuckle and then the kiss of death, I, 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 whatever that move is. She had like a razor's like a flippy razor's edge. It looked kind of whoa, like a razor's like the reverse razor's edge into a turnbuckle, which just did not look good. She did whatever the kiss of death is. I'll tell you what. <sighs> I'm so sorry, Santana Garrett. I knew you were going to lose, though. Let me make it up to you. Let me, like, treat you to an ice cream or something. Because this match, when it's that predictable, is a ham sandwich. Then we are a main event of the evening. And I'm like, wow, there's going to be six minutes of this. Angel Garza taking on Drew McIntyre. Uh, Garza initially jumps Drew McIntyre. Bad move, Angel Garza. Drew, he just uh, leg kick. Uh, Garza got tossed by an overhead belly to belly. Got destroyed, and then he got tossed into the barrier. On the outside, Drew McIntyre flung everyone out of the way. He flung Andrade over the barricade. Because I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, cachoo. Uh, 
what happened to Austin Theory? Austin Theory just just got like claymored. Poor Austin Theory. What a rough way to come up the WWE. Uh, yeah, back in the ring. Yeah, there's a little bit of that. There's a little like Angel Garza tries, but he rips his pants off, and that I think just infuriates Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre hit him with like that that Glasgow kiss, that headbutt. Like as I know they were on the outside, as Angel Garza came off the steps, he just said bonk. Again, Scottish headbutt, number one headbutt. I hate to do this, guys. Simone headbutts number two headbutt. And then eventually back in the ring, Angel Garza eats. <laughs> He eats another Claymore. Pin, uh, he gets pinned. One, two, three. And kind of predictable, but fun. You never know. He might lose because there are the, the numbers game. Angelina Vega, the distraction, puts that hint of a doubt in, into this. Um, then Drew's like, oh, you wanted to have some fun, huh? Yeah, he just destroyed poor Angel Garza. Angel Garza dies. Austin Theory gets speed up for all his. And then up on the stage, Drew McIntyre just tranquilos. The tranquilo pose. In a fun cheeseburger match. So, overall, I mean, I'll say it was a, yeah, cheeseburger of a match. It's really hard to fault WWE when they're trying. But the big thing is they're just doing things so by the book and so predictable. It's like, oh, wait a second. San oh, wait, Santana Garrett versus Charlotte. Oh, um, uh, yeah, Santana Garrett versus Bianca Belair. There's a chance. I doubt it, though. Uh, even less of a chance for, for, for poor... See, I'm so used to saying Lacey Lane. For Caden Carter against Charlotte Fair. You know that's not happening. So they, they, they're they doing the NXT jobbers things, except for now they're just bringing up the NXT women to be jobbers. And there has been absolutely no mention of Roman Reigns. Um, they also did have a very short, because I know they did the full Harvey Finkel tribute on SmackDown. So again, they just showed it, showed the sign. Again, good classy move, WWE. I like that. And that was WWE Raw. They're, they're doing what they can. It's just becoming very formulaic and very predictable. Give me a glimmer of hope. Oh, wait, there's three versus one? Maybe those three versus this one. Oh, wait, who is this person? I've never heard of this person before. Oh, wow, she was actually pretty powerful on, on NXT. Maybe. Oh, wait, my princess Kimberly's back. Yeah. yeah well, it's not happening. But uh, so the rest of the week, tomorrow, there's going to be a special live stream event. It's going to be day one of Rebellion. I think I know. I know exactly. Oh, I have to get that picture. I know exactly what I'm going to do for my thumbnail for that. I guarantee that. Um, so tomorrow's day one of Rebellion. That should be interesting. I hope. I have no idea what, what Impact's going to do. Uh, Wednesday's going to be, again, a review of AEW. Thursday, I'm off. I have no more. I have no more things to talk about. Almost. So there's no need to fill up this. Make filler space. I can relax, tranquilo. Let's go hobo that night or evening. Friday is a red wine and pizza smackdown. I have to remember to put that thumbnail up. And Saturday, Sunday, I'm off again. So this has been pretty interesting. I hope everyone's doing pretty good. Again, I hope the state of Florida is just like the state of Georgia. The governor says, get back to work, you lazy piece of crap. 
Get back to work, you son of a bitch. Fire, you can't fire me. But other than that, everything else is being said. You know what you can. So take care, everyone. Um, when you can, enjoy your adult beverages at 2 in the morning. Wow. Maybe I will just make sexy Starks. I have to make her. <laughs>